YouTube, today we're gonna to be doing my tier list for every single flex player in the Call of Duty League, and it's going to be from Major One up until right now. But before I do, make sure you sub to the channel. We are trying to hit 50,000. More importantly though, we're trying to pass Octane in total subs by the end of the year. I appreciate all love as always. So we're gonna get into it right now and don't ask me about what shirt I'm wearing because it is a gag gift. The first player on my tier list is going to be Kenny. Now Kenny is going to be in the lowest tier we have here, which is D tier, unfortunately, because Ken is my guy, but he just hasn't been playing like the Kenny that I personally know. I know a lot of you guys may think he's overrated. I know Kenny is a superstar talent. Now, it doesn't mean that he's going to be a superstar player, but he is a player with superstar talent. There's great players, eh, maybe not great, but there's very good players in the league that don't have superstar talent, and they can never be a superstar level player, but Ken does. But just something is not working for him right now in this game, um, and I don't know if, if, if it is his role, because I have heard rumors that Kenny is going to be going to that main SMG role, but unfortunately for this tier list, I have to have him in the flex. So who knows? Maybe that'll get him back to his roots. You know, I'm talking best player in the game type beat. But for now, up until this point, he just has not been a very good flex player. Kenny has not only the lowest KD out of all flexes, but he also has the lowest damage per life out of all flexes. And even though this stat is a little fugaze, I thought it was quite interesting because he was also last in it. He is last in non-traded kills per life. Maybe he's playing too fast with an automaton to where he's in situations where it just doesn't benefit him. You know, where maybe the Volkswagen, however you pronounce that gun, would fit him more, even though I think it might be getting GA'd, or the MP40. And joining Kenny in the D tier is another player that I'm very surprised to have here. He's an absolute superstar last year. One of the most entertaining players that I've watched in recent memory, but he just hasn't been performing. That's Toronto Ultra's Cami. Cami is in the D tier along with Kenny, the twins, the duo. Cami also ranks in the bottom three for KD with flexes, but thinking a little bit deeper, I would say Cami, he only realistically has one mode that he's been performing well in, and that's control. But when you look at hardpoint, Cami has one of the lowest KDs out of any flex. He has the lowest damage per life out of any flex. He is third in engagements per minute for hardpoint. We all know Cami is a very aggressive player, very similar to Kenny. So, you know, maybe there is a trend here or I'm just making something up. But I think maybe Toronto Ultra, their pacing is a major issue so cami has been playing very aggressively in hardpoint but he's just not making it work and his snd has been even worse cami is tied with his duo ken for the lowest kd in snd the lowest damage per life in snd and he's also in the bottom three for kills per nine rounds but he just hasn't been performing him and kenny they are the two d tier players for me right now hate to see it but i gotta call it how i see it and then moving on to C tier, it gets a little bit tough here because the first player in the C tier is going to be Paul X. The reason why I have Paul here is because Paul has a mode that he is really bad at. And NYSL is really bad at in general in control. Um, but Paul is by far the worst control player, I would say, out of all the flexes so far with his sample size. Uh, he's got a 0.78 in that mode with NYSL, I should clarify. And not only that, he has the lowest damage per life out of any flex in the league right now. So while Paul does have two good modes, I would say, Hardpoint and SND, none of these other guys that I have above him have a mode as bad as that. When it comes to overall KD, Paul ranks 9 out of the 12 flexes. He's 10th in damage per life, and he's 10th in a little fun stat, non-traded kills per life, which basically means he's, he's getting one and he's basically getting dusted. And joining Paul in the C tier is going to be TJ Haley. He's another guy who, look, Boston's been playing pretty damn well, and TJ has been doing a solid job, I think, especially over the years of really transitioning from that SMG, that aggressive SMG player into more of that flex role. 
um, as he's gotten older. And he's he's my guy. You know, I, I'm, I'm really cool with Teach. But when I'm comparing him versus the other flexes in the league, it, it's hard to move him any higher for me. And I know stats don't tell the whole story, but I know some of you guys out there love when I talk about it. So TJ ranks second worst when it comes to overall KD between all flexes. He is at the eighth spot when it comes to damage per life. And he is number nine for non-traded kills per life. When it comes to TJ's best mode, it's no surprise that it is SND. He not only has a 1.07 in the mode right now, but he also is fourth highest in damage per life out of all flexes. And he also finds himself averaging the fourth highest kills per nine rounds in SND. But his other two modes are just kind of lackluster. When we're talking about hard point, TJ has a 0.91 KD, the lowest out of all flexes. He's got the fourth lowest damage per life, and he just finds himself right in the middle of the pack when it comes to his engagements. And then in control, it's about the same thing. You know, he's got a 0.96 in that mode, and his damage per life puts him right kind of smack dab in the middle. So he has one mode that I think he is amongst the best flex players, and it's SND. But he's just got two modes, lackluster for me. Love you, Bob, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm your boogeyman for a reason. Moving on to the B tier though, we have the MVP of the second major who will be the first player on this list. And I know you may be thinking that, actually, no, I don't, you, I think you'd be crazy if you could have him any higher. For one, just because sample size is way too small. And while I'm not saying he doesn't deserve the MVP, because I think he was the spark plug for this LAG team. We just don't know enough about Spart yet. There just isn't enough there for me to move him in the same category as some of the other guys. And for all you stat guys, I will tell you this, Spart ranks number eight out of 12 in overall KD between all flexes, number seven in damage per life, and number eight in non-traded kills per life. And then when we talk about more, of the game mode specifics. SND is his bread and butter. I mean, LAG won 10 SNDs straight. They set the CDL record. Um, and I know it wasn't just him, you know, the, the whole team played great in SND, but he was one of the main reasons. At a 1.17 KD in SND, he's got potential to be even higher, but he also has potential wouldn't you use potential to be even lower? We just need to see more from him. Joining Spart though is going to be London Royal Ravens Gizmo. Just for context, Gizmo started off this year great, right? Online, then the major came. He obviously had some personal health issues uh, with his throat. He was spitting up blood. Um, you know, he was having issues back home. He's from overseas. Didn't play that great. Even though London got third, did, he did not play that great. Nowhere near what he played um, to online, at least. So, you know, can't fault him for that. Then the major two qualifiers come around and, and he plays very good online again. And then the actual major on land happens and he's just not the same player. How can I put this respectfully? I don't know if he's an online joke, okay? And what I mean by that, because of how the internet is nowadays, I don't mean literally like he's just better online, but maybe he's more comfortable online, not playing up in front of a crowd, not playing on a different setup. You know, you're at your house, you could have the lights off, you could be in your underwear, it doesn't matter. Well, they, it does matter because they stream the matches, but you know what I'm saying. It's just a different atmosphere. But I think when you look at his performance as a whole, he's been very solid across the board. And then lastly, in the B tier is going to be Optic Texas Illy. Optic Texas is Illy. Now, Illy is a player who he had a great major one. He had the best series of his career to date in the finals of that event. And he's he's been solid. He's honestly kind of underrated, I would say, right now. Eh, maybe not underrated, but... People are overlooking Illy just because he hasn't been performing nearly as well as he did in that finals where Optic won, whether it be in the qualifiers or at the second major. But he has a lot of bright spots in his game. His overall KD is just around a one so far in the league with a 0.98. 
He also finds himself smack dab in the middle at six out of the 12 flexes in damage per life. And when we want to talk about each specific mode, all three of them, he, he's kind of just been bang average. He's been solid. Like I said, that's why he's in my B tier. Um, he's around a 1.0 in all of them. It, his damage per life is around the middle of the pack. You know, it's, uh, it depends on the mode. Some he's a little bit higher, a little bit less. Um, he obviously makes great plays. I think one of the biggest things for me is even though if you were to look at his stats, right, and, and they are pretty bang average, uh, he is the IGL for this Optic team, in my opinion. And I think he's a very smart player. I think he is their, their floor general, essentially, and he keeps everyone on the same page, and that is something big. That's why I have Illy there. But now we get to move on to the fun part. This is the A tier. I'm going to try and speed run through this because there's a lot of them. The four players in the A tier are going to be Seattle Surge's Sib, Minnesota Rockers Attach, Florida Muneers Skies, and Paris Legion's Temp. Now, doing this as fast as I can, Sib's got two modes where he is elite at. That's going to be Hardpoint and Control. When we talk about Hardpoint, he does have a 1.05 KD, but that's not really the important thing. Because a 1.05 is solid by, by any means, but he also finds himself third in damage per life out of all flex players. He's also contributing to over 26% of his team's kills in hardpoint, and he is the second fastest flex player, at least when we're talking about gauges per minute. They can be kind of fugues, but when you have a large sample size, it tends to line up a little bit more often than, than, than not. And then his control, he has a 1.1. He also finds himself third out of all the flexes in damage per life. SND is his weak mode, but he has two elite modes. I think overall as a player, he's been fantastic. And then when we talk about attach, attach is been Mr. Consistent. His overall KD has him at number three out of all flexes with a 1.08. He's number two when it comes to non-traded kills per life. So he's getting at least one and staying up. And he finds himself at number four overall in damage per life. Now, Attach is one of the slower flexes in the league right now. There's, there's no hiding that, um, especially, in fact, when we're talking about hard points specifically, he does have the lowest engagements out of any flex player in the league, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Fast, slow. It's all about the pace of your overall team, if that makes sense, and how you complement one another. Okay. When we're talking about SND as well, he finds himself with a 1.12 KD, kind of in the middle of the pack when it comes to damage per life. And he's just averaging above six kills per nine rounds. Lastly, we have control where he has a 1.09. So he's consistent across the board, positive in every single mode. And he finds himself at number four in damage per life in control, which makes sense because he is a little bit slower of a flex player. Okay. But he's Mr. Consistent. You know, he's always going to clutch up. You know what you're going to get out of him. And then for the last two players, Look, I don't really need to say much about Skies or Temp. They've both been fantastic throughout the game so far. Now, I will say I had Donnie Temp a lot lower um, in my last tier list after the first major, but that's also because it's early on and I needed to see more. But after what he did in not only the qualifiers, but the second major, uh, it's well-deserved that he is in the A tier. And we're talking about overall KD. He's number two with a 1.1 just behind Celium. He's also number two overall across all modes in damage per life. And when it comes to his contributions in the kills department with his team, he ranks at number one out of all flex players. He's averaging 27.5% of his team's kills, which is a lot. You know, I would say on average, it's probably around 24, 25%. That 2% is wild. And he's just, he's one of the best when it comes to getting kills. In hard point specifically, 1.1 KD, second in damage per life with 136. He also is playing at a very fast pace. 
Um, in hardpoint, he finds himself at number five in engagement per minute. And then in SND, which is probably his weakest mode, he still has a 106, okay? And he's middle of the pack when it comes to damage per life, and he's almost averaging seven kills per nine rounds. And then control, he tops it in every single category. He's got a 1.12 KD, most damage per life out of any flex player. When it comes to the eye test, I know a lot of you guys probably say, you know, he plays for kills. He's not, you know, he might be a little kill horse. I wouldn't argue against that completely, but he has to be that guy for this Paris Legion team. Because unfortunately, he's not on a team like the Atlanta Phase, like Optic Texas, um, you know, like, I mean, damn near any other team. They don't really have the slaying power. So he has to be that guy to facilitate. If he doesn't, they have no shot at all. And then when we talk about Skies, I mean, he's been right there. He comes in at number four in overall KD with a 1.07. Number five in non-traded kills per life, which is just, you know, a little chair on top. I like to, I like that stat. And then number three in damage per life overall. In all three modes, he is great. He's got above a one in all three. SND is his mode. He tops the charts with a 1.25 KD, bringing him at number one. Also, he averages the most damage per life and the most kills per nine rounds and the highest team kill percentage out of any flex in the league. Enough said, Skies has been great. You know, I, I still think he's main AR, but whatever, we'll move on for that. And then last but not least, we have the S tier. It could only be one guy. It just, it it's similar to the main AR role. It was just dashing. And look, here's why. Ain't nobody fucking with Celium. I'm going to be honest with y'all. When it really comes to the flexes, nobody's messing with him. I know he is yet to win. Atlanta Phase is yet to win. But Celium has been that guy. No matter what series, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, some of the other players on his team have been inconsistent, maybe especially in the finals. Celium is a different breed. Because not only is Celium one of, if not the hardest kills in Call of Duty right now, I'm just going to tell you everything that he's first in. Celium has the best overall KD out of all flexes. He has the most non-traded kills per life. So when we're talking about his rankings, okay, compared to other flex players, he's number one in overall KD. He's number one in damage per life. He's number one in non-traded kills per life. In hardpoint, he has the highest KD out of every flex. He's got the most damage per life out of every flex. In SND, he's got the highest KD. He's got the second most damage per life, just behind Skies, 0.4 away. And then when it comes to control, you know, he's kind of, kind of average at it. He's got a 1.12 KD, and he is second behind Temp in damage per life, barely. But he just he tops the charts in every single category, and it's like not close. There's not one thing that I can point out in Celium's game that he is not elite in. And that does it. That is my flex player tier list for the season so far in Vanguard. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, some of y'all are going to love it. Some of y'all are going to hate it. Most of y'all are going to cook me. But I hope y'all have a great day. Peace.